Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike Rufus here, back for war. Uh, this week, a little bit different. Uh, we got a review of the uh, Transformers movie. Transformers, the last piece of crap that Michael Bay does. Or the last night, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, the movie with, uh, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it's a typical Transformers movie that he did. And hold on a second, let me adjust this real quick. But, um, it, it, it wasn't good, you know, and, and not surprisingly, you know, because a lot of people expected it to be bad, and it was bad, and, um, before even going to the theater, like, uh, a couple of people saw, one of my friends, uh, Kathleen, who was in, uh, Australia, she saw it, and she puts a meme up on Facebook, it says, worst movie ever, and I believed her, and, and, and no, nah, she was right, because I, I went to see it, and I'm like, you know what, well, this is bad. I mean, and not just... Before before I go into it, um, if you like action movies and explosions and stuff, you'll definitely like it. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. As an as a action movie, yeah. As a Transformers movie, with, with, there was no plot, there was no character development. Um, you had, like, unnecessary... All these extra unnecessary people that you didn't need in it. And, um, and I'll give you a rundown real quick, too. Um... Uh, first thing I want to do is, uh, Megatron was cool. I liked his jet mode. He, his uh, Rogan Bowl was cool. You see him and Barricade interact with each other and talk. Barricade uh, sounds more normal. Same voice actor from the from the first movie. Not as uh, monstrous sound. He sounds not like a normal guy, you know. And he looks cool. He looks sweet. Uh, Megatron, of course, Frank Welker. I mean, you can't. All older, look almost like an older, older Megatron. Sort of like a. Transformers Prime Megatron voice, but uh, still real good, still liked it, you know, Welker's good at that. And I think Welker also uh, did the voices for the the, the Autobot Knights, because they sounded so similar. And, uh, heck man, why not? He, he can do it. Um, yeah, let me start with the human characters. Uh, the little girl, is a Isabella or whatever, and uh, that little robot she's got with. Squeaks, but both are annoying. Both... I mean, even it, almost like they were like they forced her into the movie. It, they, it was they were forced to put little kids in the movie, and, uh, and even during the movie, she like forces herself to be no. She, I want to fight. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like you're, you're like 14 years old, and your robot kid that has one wheel. How you you know? It, it was that bad. I mean, that annoying character, annoying little. And uh, like I said, there's gonna be some spoilers here. Uh, that Squeak's character was, was should have been destroyed within the first second. Um, anybody, if anybody's, ha if there's any Wheelie fans out there, Wheelie's actually in it, and uh, he's pretty good. I like. I, I never, I, I never minded him. He was all right. They, they made him. You know, he was comic relief. Um, no brains though. I would have liked to seen both of them interact. Wheelie's in it. The uh, Day Trader, which is supposed to be like a wreck guard uh, type thing. Would have been cool if they had the right guy doing the voice. It was a Steve Buscemi doing the voice. If they would have gotten Eric Idle or even Weird Al to do the voice, it would have been cool. But he came off as like, he was only there for like maybe a minute or so. And uh, came to the trade parts and then he brings him Starscream with Severed Head to the junkyard they're all waiting in. Um, that was a, and, and the thing is like, and if you notice in the, like his face, like it, I don't know if you noticed in the trailer, like too human looking. You know, just like look kind of like Han, even like Quintessa. Yeah, they're robots, but it's like it's like picture my face, but just metallic. That's how they're doing it. Come on, they're, they're that's one of the things that was, that was killing the movie to begin with. I'd rather have the monster faces than the human humanistic metal faces. That it, you know how it looks. Um, but no, Mega, Megatron's face looked good, like very straight and, and metallic, and, and had human qualities, but it wasn't like soft human it was hard metal qualities on him um anyway so that's the the girl Isabella or whatever there's a if you didn't people they saw you guys saw there's this one guy I don't know if he's a tech guy or no he's like the he's the one science guy when they're fighting and they're trying to figure out how to stop Cybertron from coming to earth oh no it's quantum physics and this and that this, this guy I don't we never know who his name is he just comes out of nowhere he's annoying as hell and it's like they all, Bay always has to stick that one annoying character that everyone hates in, the, and it, and it turned out to be this guy, 
and uh, no, had no no business being in the movie. It had nothing to do with the plot at all. Um, uh, Mark Wahlberg was good. Yeah, it was good to see him again. Um, Lennox was good, but the only thing was like it didn't. It was good to see him, but it's like it, it was always we were always used to see Lennox and Epps together as a team, fight you know fighting together, doing something. Together. It just Lennox didn't. Yeah, it was still there, but it was it was like you missed Epps, and that, and then you're not supposed to. If you make a good movie, you don't make him make you want to. When you miss another character, you you feel like oh man, so and so should have been in it. You shouldn't do that. Movie shouldn't do that. Movie should be like oh wow, this guy's back, and you forget about the other guy. And not that you want to forget it, but um, and I know Tyrese said um, he was making Fast Eight, so he couldn't with the scheduling couldn't uh, make it to Transformers. So hopefully, they do another one. He's in that one. Uh, Simmons is great. He's in like a few scenes. He's he's almost like a not messenger, but like information guy. Like he'll call up uh, 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 Anthony Hopkins' character. I think Lombarton is that. Is that the name? hold on? Let me find it real quick. Um, and uh, he'll like get him information because they're trying to find the the tomb uh, of King Arthur, or not King Arthur, King of Merlin. You know, King Arthur. Is, they they mention King Arthur and stuff. But, Merlin's got this staff that the, the Cybertronian knight gave him that they need to use, and they're, they're trying to fight him. And like, for some, Miss Simmons knows all the he know he knows these people. He still has connections. He's down in Cuba with one of the uh, um, wreckers. It's weird. It, it's it's Leadfoot's head and uh, Topspin's body. I, I don't know. And when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm like, what? It doesn't make any sense. Because we also left what got destroyed in the the fourth movie, and there was no Roadbuster or Topspin even mentioned, so which is kind of weird. Uh, uh, so uh, Anthony Hopkins is Edmund Burton, so uh, he's like the last w Wiki supposedly, and he, he's one of the guys that, that guards the Transformers secrets. And uh, supposedly uh, Sam and his family are gone, dead. They're mentioned, but there's like they don't exist anymore. I'm like, which I'm like, yeah, because I never <laughs> I never like Sam anyway. Um, Laura Haddock was Vivian. She's a new, new uh, character, and she was good. She was descendant of Merlin, so the last descendant of Merlin. She was the only one that could stop that. She had to touch the staff to stop it. She was the only that could do it. The Cybertronians could do it too, but since it was on Earth, a human had to, you know, grab it to stop it. And she was the one that could do it. Uh, of course, Mark was. Everyone's saying, "Oh, he's the last knight." It's not that he was designed to be the last knight. It's like. It starts with they find this robot crash landed, and uh, it is this is what doesn't make any sense. He crash landed there, I guess, recently, but he's from the past. So unless he did some time travel or something. And anyway, he has this amulet, you know, and uh, this amulet. Uh, he gives it to Mark Wahlberg. He gives it to Cade. Cade's like, oh, you keep this, keep this now. But and the thing like sprouts legs and follows him. So it's, it's Cybertron, so it follows him and chooses him as the last guy. As the last night, supposedly. So it's not that he was chosen to be. It's like whoever's there at the moment that has like, uh, who who's a, uh, I guess who's courageous and, and a leader. That's who it chose. It chose him. And uh, not that, it, and he's not like a big focus. He does help at the end, but um, I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, it's, something, it's something different, you know. It's not like in the first movie where Sam takes a cube and shows it in the Megatron, which I thought was a stupid. This actually made sense because it helped him. Out, but at the same time, Megatron are trying to look for him, because since uh, Kate has the amulet, uh, that helped him get to uh, the staff by uh, Merlin's staff down the, you know, where it is. Um, so Laura Haddock is Vivian. She's like a professor, like I said, descendant of Merlin, and she helps out. Uh, who else is in it? Oh, Jared Carmichael, the uh, the black guy. I'm gonna say now, nah, and not to be racist, he's pretty. He's pretty funny. I like. He works for Kate. He works. Uh, I guess Kate hires him as he's the vice president of of Kate's. Like uh, I guess it, it, Kate doesn't even have like a uh, a real job or a real office. It's just they they hang out in the junkyard where all their stuff's at. Kate's wanted because again they're still on the run for some reason from the government. Even though and you see it the last in the last movie, like he's like, oh yeah, the one character is to give him a house and everything because they're for helping out. But he's still on the run. So I mean, which, which still doesn't make it's like. It didn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, Jared Carmichael's pretty funny. He's good. Uh, I think his name is Jimmy or Jane, Jimmy. 
And uh, good comic relief. And not, the good thing, he's not overly comic relief. Good comic relief. And he interacts good with all the guys. Um, Dinobots are in it. You got Grimlock, sl Slag. I'm not going to say Slag. And uh, Swoop is for a little bit. And you got these mini baby Dinobots who, again, for no reason, you, you know, are, are like, why are they in it? You know, it's up maybe for like the kids or something. Um, who else? Um, when they're in the uh, junkyard, there's like this. All right, it's a front end loader. It looks like sca the constructed kind of scavenger. That's what he looks like. He's yellow. And he transforms briefly. And you see, him. it looks pretty cool. But that's it. He, he doesn't fight. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't say anything. So it's just like an extra character they have. Same thing with uh, Burton's. Burton goes to his castle, and you see, you know, he's got Cogman, who is his, like a droid, his butler, and this big World War One tank era guy who transforms once. I think it's Bull, Bulldog. Is that it? Bullseye or something? And that's it. And you never see him. He doesn't do anything. He just sits there. I guess because he's like, I guess he's there to be there. Uh, the Decepticons. Um, it was cool. Megatron goes to them. No, no, go to the hu humans, because the humans are going to use Megatron to get to Cade. So they're going to let them do the dirty work for him. Which I'm like, which is, I thought was a rip-off of Suicide Squad. Because once they got to Cade, the humans are like, alright, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to give too much away, but, um, Megatron goes to the humans, and, uh, you've seen the commercial. They're all asking for these different guys. Or, Megatron's asking for these different guys. He asked for, uh, all right, in no particular order, uh, Mohawk, which is the motorcycle, right? One of the, the character just like, when you go, say, I want my crew back, I'm like, I'm figuring, well, crew, oh, man, Soundwave, Shockwave, you know, Starscream, he's got Barricade, right? But I'm like, and, and Mohawk, I'm like, what? It's, it's a, he's like a motorcycle, in the robot form, he looks like a weird, like, frog-type head, almost like waspender shaped head, with a green Mohawk. Um, and right there, I'm like, he's gonna get, this guy's gonna get destroyed immediately, and he does. All the Decepticons are just there to get killed. Uh, he asks for, uh, who else, uh, a few guys, um, oh, uh, Dread, Dreadbot, or Dread, is that, 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 that guy, Dreadbot, and I'm like, which is, I guess Dreadbot was, a. He turns into the, you guys saw, I don't know if you remember, we saw like this gray, this uh, prototype gray Volkswagen van. That's Dreadbot, I think. Because, again, you never see who transforms into what. You figure it out when as you go along. But uh, I was just like, what the heck is this? Another guy, uh, Nitro Zeus. I was like, what the hell is Nitro Zeus? Another guy that you don't know. Um... He, he's, I think, some kind of truck. He looks kind of like Shockwave. Onslaught, of course, you know, is the the car, uh, the truck, uh, almost like a big, huge version of Hoist. Uh, tow truck, you know. Um, Dreadbot, I, 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 Dreadbot was the, Nitro Zeus, I think, was a jet. They should have, what they, what they should have done was they called, it should have been called Hooligan. And uh, Dreadbot was like, Dread, because at, at first I'm like, wait, Dreadbot, Dreadbot and Berserker are the same guy. So Dreadbot's there. Berserker is, uh, he's in it for two seconds. Megatron asks to have Berserker. And they say, no, you can't have him. He's too dangerous. And then they show him coming out almost like, he's like on a stretcher, like a, uh, how do you say it? Like a, a straight jacket stretcher type thing. You see, he's not in a straight jacket, but he's like wrapped up like that. And they, they won't let him have him. I'm like, then why'd you, bring, well, you know, why even mention having them? Um, and there's one more character. Uh, I think that's it. But uh, it just didn't make any sense because half of these people are like, number one, half of them, with the exception of Onslaught, don't exist in the Transformers lore. Also, I thought, I thought it was just a waste of a name because it's not even like the guy was like a. I, I get a big truck with a cannon, then there's all Onslaught. Don't make him a tow truck. That made no sense. If you're going to make a tow truck, you could have called him like, what are they, the tow liner or something, you know, but Onslaught needs, oh, Onslaught's a tow truck. It, again, it's Michael Bay killing, you know, the, uh, I didn't even kill, he's, it's like, oh, I don't care, I'm going to put names to whatever characters I want, that's what he did. So, um, but let me find out what that one guy, one character was that I can't figure out. Okay, so I was right, uh, 
Redbot is the the v, the Volkswagen uh, guy for some. And I, I still don't understand that, you know. Hey, let me get Man Troubles and get to this Volkswagen guy that's on this team. I don't know. I didn't make any sense. Uh, but yeah, Nitro Zeus is another jet. Because if you if you guys remember the trailer of the scene with the two jets fly away, that's Megatron and Nitro Zeus. And, um, and of course, when they bring out Berserker and they say they can't, I'm like, oh yeah, finally, a guy, I want to see him do some damage. And no, you can't, they don't let him have him. You know, so I'm like, oh, come on. Anyway. So, you got Berserker, Mohawk, Nitro Zeus, Onslaught, Barricade, and Megatron. Uh, Barricade has some good screen time. And again, Barricade disappears, so he never... All of them are gone except for Megatron and Barricade. But Barricade just, again, decides to drive off. You don't see him again, just like in the first movie. So, you can tell he'll be back again. Um... Well, how did, how did, I don't even know how they all. He, he, oh, you know how uh, Mohawk gets killed by Bumblebee. Oh, what a shock! You know, same thing with uh, what's his name, uh, Dreadbot. I uh, start not start. Uh, Bumblebee just shoots him or something. Shoots him to the head. That's it. Onslaught. I think they all all beat him up, and they this is like he blows up and his head just flops off. And, it, and, it, and Onslaught turns into this big. Hulking truck too, and I'm like, what the heck? It should have been done better than that. Um, they also have the uh, the Knights of Cybertron, or all the uh, different guys that combine. In the movie, all twelve knights or ten knights combine into the dragon, where we're getting the Torvald Tutan clan. And you got Dragonstorm, which is a combined dragon. Steelbane is one of the guys. I think we're getting them as a deluxe. Um, Dranit, uh Dragonicus and Storm Rain and Skulltron. And I don't know, I think we might get, be getting Skulltron actually. But uh we're, I said we're getting um So we're getting the I forget who the two are getting as a uh, Dragon Tron or Dragon Storm, but you, you guys know you can see the toys. But uh in the movie there's the twelve of them that combine, and you can tell because it's like just like uh when the Subcons come in and uh, they get Infernicus and the Fernicus is like, it's five, it's five of them, even though the Tor we're getting is a remake of the uh, Abominus mode. Um, five or six, uh, six, and Fernicus is six guys. And uh, and even he, it's like he comes out of nowhere. He doesn't come in until like the end because he's he's working with uh, Quintessa. And, you know, and then Megatron, you know, and Quintessa are, you know, like dealing with each other at the end. And that's when he comes out. So it's really like the the plot is like here and there and everywhere, and uh, this is what I don't get. Um, Prime, you know, Prime flies in the space. Uh, he goes back to Cybertron, and uh, Quintessa is on Cybertron. And, I'm, and, and again, I'm like, well, first off, Quintessa is the planet the Quintessons are on. They made her an actual character, and she's on Cybertron waiting for. Him. But. Uh, I don't get it. I mean, why would she be on there to begin with? You know, so then she talks to him. She's like, hey, you know, I sent you to do something. You didn't do it. Blah, 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 whatever. Um, and he's trying to tell her, hey, you got to destroy Earth, man. Cybertron's dying. It's dead. If you want to see it live, you got to destroy the Earth. And he's like, oh. And, then they, and he tells her the story. Like, you have to, you know, in order for Cybertron to live, they, you know, you, have, you know the, Cybertron has to live. You can't let it, uh, there's an evil force out there. That's gonna destroy Cybertron. And he mentions it's Unicron, and uh, and, he's a, and then he's like, Unicron is Earth, so you have to destroy the Earth. And uh, and then throughout the movie, you keep seeing all these horns around the planet. There's six horns around the planet, just coming out of the ground, and no one knows what it is. And of course, it's Simmons that figures it out. When when the when the world was all one continent, is Pangaea, it, the, the the horns form a circle, and that's Unicron. So because and because it. it I guess because it, they're not Pangea, there's no Unicrons, you know, theoretically. Um, that doesn't mean it can happen again. But the horns are moving, whether the Earth moves, or the planets, or planets, the continents move or not. So, which is an interesting take on that. And uh, that was actually a good idea. It's like, oh, you know what? 
I'll, I'll return to be Earth. They can't destroy me. You'll be you'll be killing the whole planet. You'll be killing all those people on the planet. But uh, they're still they still have to figure out a way to to defeat Unicron. And uh, they leave you at the end saying, you know, hey, um, Unicron is Earth. You know, they stopped it from. You know, pretty much, and, 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 that, and another plot hole, it's like, the whole, the, in, in the trailer, when you see all those pieces of Cybertron, like, they, they lean on Earth, and they're, and they're trying to destroy the Earth, and I'm like, because, like, they're sacking, they're sapping up the energy of the Earth to, to revive Cybertron, and part of Cybertron does make, get back to normal, but that's another, another plot detail, I'm like, well, why is it doing that, you know, that makes no sense at all, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so from a standpoint, from an action movie standpoint, it's good. From a plot standpoint, it's like you're like scratch your head. Well, what's this and what's that and why is it doing this and and it, it, it's no, it's just like it's all over the place. You know, it's like you know what, uh, Revenge of the Fall. I think <laughs> had a better plot than this because at least you you know, I think Devastator saved that one. <laughs> but um, here it's like. The characters are just so dry. It's just um, and let me get, let me continue with some of the characters. Um, we like I said, Wheelie's in it. Bulldog was the not Bulldog Bulldog was the tank that we'd see for like two seconds. Um, Cogman was pretty good. Cogman and Burton, which was a uh, Anthony Hopkins character. They're both funny. They're both pretty. They some one line, some nice one liners. Pretty funny. Uh, you know, of course, Prime. Prime Oh, I forgot to say when when <clears throat> Prime and Quintessa are going back for Quintessa just tells, "Hey, you gotta, do you wanna, you gotta, <clears throat> you gotta go destroy Earth, man, because you you you're a Cybertron, you have to save your planet." And she like brainwashes him and, ment <clears throat> and does some mental stuff to him, and and like it, that, it, <clears throat> his um yeah, that's when the eyes turn purple. And it's like, "Hey, I'm ne I'm I'm I am Nemesis Prime. I'm gonna destroy the Earth." And, and he said, "I'm like, yeah, all right." So, and of course they fight, you know, he fights Bumblebee, and, uh, again, they made the, the fight, even though Prime is about to beat him and kill him, it's like they made it too equal. I mean, Bumblebee, they, they made him out, him and Hot Rider, and him and Hot Rider brothers, and uh, Anthony Hopkins is telling the story of how Bumblebee fought World War II and how he was, he was a deadly soldier and this and that, and again, they're trying to, it's like almost, they're, they're trying to force feed you, like, Bumblebee's the guy, he's the man, you, you gotta... It's, you we, you gotta like him, you know. And I'm like, no, you guys. What you guys don't understand is that there's too much of him out there. We're getting sick of him, you know. And they're trying to make him look like this badass. And they, and even Cade was like, oh wait, Bumblebee's a nice guy. He's not like this. He's like, and Anthony Coppins is like, no, no, he he was a badass back in the day. I'm like, come on. And I'm just, yeah, I had I heard a few people in the audience just moan like, oh my god, they're just trying so hard to push this guy as as something he's not, you know. And I was like, come on. So, yeah, but Prime does. I mean, Mulby hit Prime 20 times. Prime pimps hits him once, and Mulby's like, shook it up. And he, because, you know, Prime's like bigger, and he's throwing him around. He's about to punch him and kill him until Mulby starts speaking his normal voice. Prime knows Mulby, what are you doing? That 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 snaps Prime out of the trance. And uh, and the thing is, Mulby's voice is so genetic. I thought it was going to be, like, cool, and, like, or maybe even close to what his G1 voice was. It, was, it sounded like. Any other voice, you know? I mean, I just, you know, Cullen's got a certain voice, the way he does Prime, Negatron's, even Barricade had a, a distinct voice at all, oh, you know, you know it's him, you know? Of course, you know, Drift and Hound are in it, and, uh, Cross, Cross, I love Crosshairs, he's just, he's still Crosshairs, you know? Um, Hot Rod I liked, I didn't like the accent, but the, it was funny because, or ironic, because even in the, I think Cade said, mentioned something about the accent, and Hot Rod himself and his French actor was like, oh, I, I hate this accent, I can't get rid of it, you know. It was just the program, the accent that was programmed into him because, based on the region he was in. So, then if he hates, what, wait a second, if he, if Prime, you know, if Bumblebee get a new voice, why can't Hot Rod change the accent to America? It, stupid stuff like that, you know. But of course, that's that's the, the writers of Michael Bay saying, no, we're going to do it our way, you know. Almost like he's refusing to do a good movie or refusing to do a G1 movie for the fans because let's face it, it's all as long as he's getting paid, he doesn't care, you know. But um, other than that, um, still entertaining, yes, good, no, 
I mean, this is coming from a fan. I've, I've, I've watched this 84. I got all the, I got most of the, the figures. I'm, I'm a G1 guy, Masterpiece guy too. Um, just not, not what it used to be. You know, it's, it's not, not, what, not, I shouldn't say not what it used to be. Like, out of all the movies, three and four were good. Like, three is my favorite, with the exception of Shia LaBeouf still being there. But they, that's where the, I'm, I'm watching part three, Dark of the Moon. I'm like, all right, they got something right. They're going, they're going in the right way, you know. And uh, I think, I think just having, you know, Shockwave with that big, huge drilling worm was cool as hell, too. And, uh, and having Welker do the, I think with me, because I'm a fan, Welker appearing in the, the from the second movie up uh, helped a lot, you know. And that's what kept me coming in. I think that's what kept a lot of fans. Just, that's the reason... Even with this one, having him be Megatron, officially Megatron, was like, all right, we got Welker back as Megatron, so they can't hurt. And it didn't. He it, it, it did a good job with Megatron. Um, but it's just like, at the end, it's like the fight is just like, first they're attacking the point where the staff is at and it's sucking the energy from the Earth. And, uh, but then it's like, well, what, what's, why is it sucking the energy? Why is it, what's it really doing, you know? Um... Is it, you're taking are you taking the energy from the Earth or from Unicron? And, and you don't know. It's like it's just like, and they have to go they have to go up to a certain platform and destroy this thing. So all the humans go up there like you guys are gonna do it. Only the Transformers can do it, you know. And of course the little girl and Squeak sneak on the plane. They go up there. I'm like, and like of course it, it, it's it's that stupid. Oh, we got to keep little kids in the movie to to make it go. Like no, you don't need them. It's movies. I guess I've, I think like I've said what. Like a lot of people said, it's called Transformers. It's not called kids. It's not called humans. You know, give them less time. They don't need. You don't need them in the movie. You don't need big stars in the movie. You know, or you have Transformers and maybe one or two humans, and that's it. And like, it's, it's like he he always has to put the humans in. He always got to put like the army in there. Like, do it if. And this is what, the one thing I like. Like, they keep showing like Transformers still landing on Earth for a reason. And we finally figured out, well, Unicron's there. So they, they're, and which was the purpose, the, the whole creation was to, to destroy Unicron, you know. So that's why they keep coming. It's not like they stopped coming, you know. More keep coming and coming and coming. So, and they show that. And, uh, and even Anthony Cobb is like, why do you think this, they're coming here? I don't, let, that's why he tells them in the trailer, like, hey, let me show you why. And he shows them. And he explains the, the whole story as to why, you know. And, um... But, um, it's just, like, unless, you know, like, some people saw, say you have to see it twice. Some, one guy saw it twice already, and he and said it, it looked, it was better the second as he got it all. But when he said that, I, I, I mean, I sat there, I watched, I paid attention, and I got it the first time around. But just some of the stuff, you, it was so, un, you didn't need half the stuff that was in it. You know, you, some of the characters you didn't need in there at all. It didn't, you know. It wouldn't have hurt to keep him off, you know. Um, some of the fights were just like, like Megatron and, and then fighting the, this town, this abandoned town, it, which was like stupid because you didn't need to do that, you know. And then, uh, who else? Uh, I don't even think. I mean, Prime wasn't even in that scene. I think it was just the regular Autobots, and then Grimlock appeared out of nowhere, and uh, they're fighting. And then all of a sudden, Megatron's all oh, just have to catch a treat. Make that's it. Really? <clears throat> and, um, it, it just didn't make any sense. And all of a sudden, uh, it, just like stupid st stuff, stupid scenes where, like, they're running toward, at the end, they're in the fight, all the Autobots are running, I'm like, guys, transform, you guys are cars, you, you'll go fast as cars, transforms to get to where you, get, you gotta go. And I'm like, it just didn't make any sense. Just like in the original Transformers movie, when they're all inside Unicron and they're running away, Transform your vehicles and drive off. It, it, it's like common sense when you, you know. It just stupid stuff like that, you know. Like I said, the Decepticons were just there as like a uh, jobbers. If if you if you're a wrestler, you lose. That, that's what they were. They just went in there. They did the thing and got destroyed. That was it. And no character development. You can, you don't even really figure out who is who, or who does what, <laughs> you know. Um, but um. What else happened? Um, it was tough because, like I said, they did the roll call that they stole straight out of Suicide Squad. 
But just, like I said, certain characters, you couldn't tell what, who was who or what they transformed into. You really had to figure it out. You, and you did figure it out, but it was like... It would have been cool to see them all introduce the character and have them transform into their vehicle mode. That would have been great, you know? You figure it out, because it's not too hard to figure out, but it's like, come on, you know? Just, but to have that Volkswagen van in it instead of Berserker, I was like, what the heck? That didn't make any sense at all. I'm like, that's, that's just it. But we got a toy Berserker. He's only in the movie for like three seconds, maybe. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. It's just like, the marketing was, first of all, the toy marketing is horrible. You know, because um, half the characters that are, we're gonna we're not gonna get half of them. The ones that are in the movie we're not getting. Those are stuff that we're not getting. Guarantee you're not. We're not getting an onslaught, a dreadbot, and a, a mohawk. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a nitro Zeus because another, another jet to be with Megatron would be cool. But we're probably get him either. You know. Um, we're getting. The, I know we're getting the hot rod. Uh, we're getting all the Autobots. I think. It'd be cool to get that tank, even though he was only in for two seconds. He looked pretty cool. Uh, and here's a stupid thing: Hasbro will give us that. They'll, they'll give us a day trader, maybe a Legion day trader figure. That no, that, that was the, the most useless character in that. We're getting a Squeaks figure, which is like again useless. You don't need him. You you didn't need him, or it or whatever. Um, Dinobots are going to sell no matter what, so sell them. Yeah. Um, other than that, that was just it was just. I don't, it was weird. It was just all over the place, you know. It, it, it just, I, I enjoyed it, but at the same time, I, I was like scratching my head, like, what the hell did I just watch? You know, um, like I said, I, I saw uh, Wonder Woman a week ago. Actually, I saw it when it came. I saw it twice. So, and uh, not comparing the two, but um, Wonder Woman, you see this movie, and it's like you feel for those characters. You know, you you, you get attached to the character, and when like when. A certain character gets killed, and you're, you're feeling like, oh man, what the hell? And you, you, it, it makes you react, and it touches you. Like here in this Transformers movie, it's like there's some funny parts, there's some action parts, and uh, it was just like you don't feel nothing. Like you know, nobody important. I guess. I mean, like the Subdivisions get killed. And it's like, oh, what, what you know? What else to do? It's like you expected it. You knew it was going to happen. You know, none of the Autobots die, which I guess is good. But it's like. You don't get that one death where it's like, oh man, what the hell, you know? At least in the first one, Jazz gets ripped in two. You're like, what the heck, man? It shocked you. It brought it was like, it brought you to tears. Not it brought nothing brought you to tears, but it was like, what the hell, man? It it, it it gave you that, you know, like in Dark of the Moon when they kill Ironhide, like mid movie, I'm like, whoa, I was expecting that, and I was like, Tch. instead of giving us the twins getting killed, which in, in the book, in the graphic novel, or now not the the written novel, the twins and Ironhide get killed, but no, they couldn't do that. It gives Ironhide, which is like, oh man, because we felt we love that character. We felt we felt for that character. Um, I was just like, what the heck, man? You know, and and even even in the uh, Age of Extinction, when when they're hunting Ratchet down, you feel so bad. It's like, oh wow, they're like, he's unarmed. They're gonna kill him anyway. You know, here there, there's no moments like that in this movie. There's no heartfelt uh, heartfelt moment. That's what I mean. Like, like um, even I mean. Like I said, there's going to be spoilers, so if I spoil it, you know, too bad, but, I mean, uh, Andy Hopkins' character dies, you know. You expect, cause he, was, he, 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 he was around long enough to, he's like he said, I want to see, I want to be around to see the end, to see it done right, and he saw everything done right, and that was it, and he was older too, so, and Cogger was his, was there, and he was like, yeah, you did, you know, you did good, you lasted all you did, but, uh, and you felt a little for him, because, you, you know, but no other character where it's like, Oh really? No, there's nothing. You, the, this movie didn't have the feeling and emotion like the maybe the first ones did have. Like even the first one, you first see him come out, you first prime, and you see Prime them come to Earth, and you see him all transform for a second. You're like, oh, in all, like, oh man. And, and a lot of us, especially from that era, were like, just like, it felt we felt it because like we were like finally seeing our heroes from the '80s be, be like, you know, live action and real. Like, oh my God, you know. It's, but uh, it, there was no moment like that in this movie, and I think you know, I think you have to have that, you know, because without emotion, it's just like, oh, that's it. And that, that, and that's where I felt, felt the end, even you know. It's like, well, man, this, you know, not that everyone had to be wiped out, but there was no moment where like, oh, what the heck, you know, what, what are we gonna do? It was just, you know, it was just there. That's it. <laughs>
Um, trying to think, what else? Uh, um, I mean, like I said, you guys are gonna have to see it and judge for yourselves. Like a lot of people love it. It's a good action movie. I'm not gonna say it's not, but it's not. It, Transformers is just on the title. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, how can they have a movie? Prime doesn't even transform it at once. You see him in his truck mode, but you never see him transform into it or out of it. Which, which is like, come on. They just a lot of I mean. There, there, there were other cool transfer. I guess they figured because we see him transform so many times, you don't need to. But um, we got the cool uh, hot rod transform a few times, which is cool. Um, well, so um, Hallen transformed into his new form. The Day Trader transform had to be like, I think it was the worst one because it's like, it's like, it, it was like an old truck with trash on it. And he just stands up. I mean, what, what, what did he crawl in and he just stood up on his, you know, which I thought was just like weird, you know. Um, you don't really, like, the, the, the Decepticon I just see transform, but they, it happens so quick you can't get a good glimpse of it, you know. Um, Barricade Transformer was awesome, you know. It was just like, wow, you know. And um, it handled that right. And just, just to see, I, I, I I'll take it back. When you see Barricade on the screen, especially for me, I was like, oh, you felt emotional, like, oh, he's back, great, you know. Because remember, he never, he never died in the first movie. But having him come back, I was like, oh, all right, you know. So that was cool. It brought you back to the first movie, you know. And there's a lot of uh, throwbacks to the first movie. Watching Simmons back in there was like a throwback, you know. It was like, yeah, you, 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 that, that was heartfelt. Because just seeing him good, again, was good. But like I said, like Lennox without Epps, they like, didn't do it for him. I still liked his character, but without Epps, it was just like, eh. like they had General Morshire. I'm like, who the hell? Who cares about this guy? I I never cared for him in the first one anyway. And I thought he was killed off in the first one. They brought him back anyway. I'm like, nah, don't bring back. If you're gonna do a something like that, bring back characters we like, you know. But uh, Epps, like I said, Epps and 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 Lennox are what worked. So. Um, yeah, Simmons was a... You could put him in any movie, even for like a minute as a cameo, it would be good. Yeah, but Simmons, same Simmons, same same attitude, same, same expression, same personality. And uh, that was good, I liked it. Um, <clears throat> so there are... There's some good points, there's some bad points. It's about 50-50, you know. you got to go see and judge for yourself. Um, I'm actually going to see it again because two of my friends haven't seen it, so I'm going to see it with you two them anyway. But, it, it, you know, it's a Transformers movie, so I'm going I'm to check it out. But uh, I'm just so, if this is La Bay's last one, I'm so glad, you know, because he's you got to give someone else a shot at it. Um, I, I think there's a, someone else can do better with it too. And uh, but reboot it, redo everything, and, and re make them look there, make them all the trans, make them look like Transformers. They're, they're making them look like knights and humanistic. It was just over. It, it, it just wasn't working, you know. Um, Barricade like on screen looked great as a robot because he looked like a robot. No uh, humanistic features, no curves. It was blo blocking curves, but it worked. They made it work. Same with Megatron. Megatron looked, face-wise, looked great. Um, and I did like the the robot mode too, but this is like too curved, too uh, too knight-looking. You know, and it's like no, you got to drop that. You got to go back to go back to the beginning from scratch. You know, like it's just certain characters look so good in the robot mode. It was like. Like Ratchet and Ironhide and uh, Sideswipe too look good because you still saw the, the car parts that made them, you know. Like Age of Extinction when when they brought one in Lockdown. Lockdown was like it, it, too many of the humanistic features, you know. It, it, you couldn't tell you use a Lamborghini or a Transformer. It didn't look like one. Hot Rod, they fixed it. They, the Hot Rod had the chassis, so he, he looked like a Lamborghini. Like he changed one to a Lamborghini. He looked good. So um, they, they kept that, you know. But certain characters just like. Cogman, I don't know if he was a trans. He didn't transform into anything. He's more like a R two D two ripoff. Yeah, you know? great character though, but still didn't do for nothing for me. Like nah, you know. Same thing with a uh, Mohawk. Mohawk, you know, just like I say, it looked like a waspinator with a Mohawk, and he, had, and he turned into a bike. The bike was cooler than the robot mode. Let's put it that way. Uh, Dreadbot, we just saw a close up of him when you, when they do the title scene. You see him here and there. That's it. Uh, same with a. Uh, Onslaught, you don't even know what he looks like because it happens so quick. 
they introduce these characters and it's like and they're gone within you know whatever and like the scenes with Prime are just like so like half an hour away from, apart from me he's not even in the mood for that long you know he's in it enough where he's in it but it's, at the end it's like what that's it man we wanted, I wanted more Prime you know the, if anything the movie's about him you know but uh, like I say, I mean, out of a, I'm gonna give it six out of ten. Not even six. I'll give it five out of ten, because it wasn't great. It wasn't good. It was. Uh, I guess I'm telling everyone it, the movie was okay, and that's it. Um, it's a. Uh, like I said, I'll go see it again and, and see what I miss or what I should have got. But um, other than that, it wasn't. It wasn't the greatest. Yeah. You know? um, Dark of the Moon is still my favorite. Um, Age of Extinction is probably in second place. The first one, though, for me, I'm always going to put it last because it just, it just wasn't enough, you know? And, um, the first one, if I... Not that it was rushed, but it felt rushed. Because in the second movie, we get all these new characters out of nowhere. We get a Devastator. That, I thought... Even though people hated that movie, it was, yeah, it was long, long, but there was, like, so many good characters in that. You know, with the exception of the twins. The twins were annoying. Um, but uh, Age of Extinction... I like the, I, I'll put that second. Darker than the age, age of Extinction, first and second, only because we got we got Welker as Galvatron slash Megatron. It worked, you know. Um, but I mean, you got Leonard Nimoy as Sentinel Prime and Darker than the Moon. That yeah, that pretty much did too. Um, but um, just to have Welker take over the Megatron Galvatron voice again to me was like, all right, finally, you know. So that made it all worth it. And just, just that that voice, it's hard to explain. If you're a G1 fan, you know, but hearing him and hearing Prime's voice on the big screen in the room at that just makes it all worth it. And, uh, but anyway. Um, but the movie was entertaining. There was no boring parts, I'll tell you that. It just jumped around a lot. And the editing was just done a lot, which which I didn't get. Um, or the editing, it's like, the the... I got a lot of people said the plot jumps around too much, scenes jump around, and like something's happening here. Certain things are, you see certain things, like uh, things that don't even pertain to anything in the movie. Especially that one tech guy, that one science tech guy that he didn't even belong in there. He, he that was a waste. He was just like, you have to have that. Like Bay has to have that one annoying character everyone hates, you know, and that was him. You know, I think in a, like in Dark of the Moon, it was Ken Jeong. But everyone knows King John. He was he was a great character. He was in there for a little, little bit. He was annoying, but he was funny. This guy is just annoying, and you want to like rip his head off. And uh, same with the girl, uh, whatever Isabella, or whatever with, with the squeaks. Uh, she was just who cares. But uh, anyway, that's my uh, that's my take on it. that's my review. Somewhat spoilers, not nah, a lot of spoilers, but. If you want to, I'd definitely say go see it. If you, so you know what it is. So many people say how bad it is. It's gonna make you want to go see it because you want to see how bad it is. You know, because that's just how it goes. This is America. We hate everything. If we don't, oh, we, why, why you hate? Oh, we gotta go see why I hate. So you go and see it. And oh wait, it's not, the, it's not so bad. But oh, wait, I hated this part though. You know, everyone's got their own opinion. Um, but uh, it, it was a good time. I'm, like I said, if you go, you're not gonna be bored. I'll tell you that. All right. So definitely, if you. You want you if you're bored, you want to go out and watch a senseless violence and transforming and blowing up. Go watch the movie. So it's not that bad, but story wise, it's horrible. That's a, that's it's a big it's a big difference. It doesn't have to be. That's why a lot of people killed a, a Revenge of the Fallen. It's, oh, it was a horrible story. Well, oh, it sucked. I'm like, yeah, but it made the most out of all. Of them. So what's that say? People want to see non like senseless violence. <laughs> doesn't that matter? And that's true. It doesn't matter if it's the story's bad or not. If 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 you're entertained, if you're like sitting in your seat, you want to see what happens next. That's what all matters, you know. And I think you figured that out. But um, at the same, you can still write a good story and make it where you can't, you know. That's what Wonder Woman did. Like you want to see what happened next, but the story was so good in that. But anyway, Transformers: The Last Night, Last Bay movie. I hope so. I, we need a new guy. We need a we need a reboot. And uh, we need new new. How about uh, new cast? Nah. Oh, uh, well, it depends. Uh, Wahlberg's not coming back either, but uh, bring back Simmons at least. You gotta have Simmons in it. He's gotta be like the the one character that always comes around. Yeah. But uh, all right. I'm Michael Lucas. This is my review. 
slash uh, rants slash spoilers slash whatever. So if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's entertaining. And let me know what you guys think. I gave you my opinion, about 45 minutes worth. So let me see what you guys want to say, got to say about it. And uh, I'll probably... Uh, I'll probably let's see next next video. I'll probably gonna be uh, I'm heading to NJ Toy Con this Sunday, and only purely for uh, video purposes. No, because no, nah, I'm saving up for uh, other stuff, so I can't be buying too many Transformers. But I'll be at Toy Con this Sunday. But uh, here's my review of uh, Transformers: The Last Night. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, like I said, five out of ten. Not necessarily being bad. Yeah, like I said, it's entertaining. You're not gonna move out of your seat. It's just story-wise, it's bad. All right, guys, I'm Mike Ruthless. I'm out. I'll talk to you guys later.